Alright, so we are playing No Man's Sky today. Um, this is going to be the third video, and I might have said it before in a previous video, but people who do commentary, and they are very good at it. Um, you know, it really is. It really is a, uh, a very impressive, because I'm here, I have no idea what to what to talk about at all. Um, like especially for a game like this, I guess this was a different kind of game where more was happening. Um, that would be a lot easier, but for something like this, like it's like, oh, I'm walking around and, um, you know, it's not as, uh, not as easy to find something to talk about. I do know, like, what I do in, um, videos after this is I try to focus on making money. And I did go on the, um, the website and I did at least look into, um, you know, something, some of the stuff about the base building, because I, you know, I, I didn't know, and I guess you can do storage, like, I guess you can put in some storage crates into your base. Um, now, mind you, what they were showing on the website, like, when, when you cycle through the, um, like, um, when you press up on the D-pad and you start cycling through, uh, they had some, uh, some options there that I don't, I, I haven't seen, so I don't know. Um, it, it might be stuff you have to discover through, uh, well, I don't know how through, I guess through the specialists uh, would be, that would make the most sense, but either way, it looks like you can, in fact, put storage in there, um, so that's something that I'm gonna try to uh, do at some point, but. Um, yeah, I'm not even on the planet right now, I'm at a space station, so I'll have to make my way back. But apparently, and I guess partly because of the Foundation update, what they added, Fighting Sentinels is pretty profitable now, and it's a good way to make money, because I added a new resource, and I guess it doesn't do anything, but you, you sell it for uh, for some money. And they also drop the uh, uh, those modules there, so it's a, a pretty good way to make money. Um, all things considered, and so I, it's what I've been trying to do is fight some of those guys and sell, um, you know, the um, uh, the, uh, the the uh, material they drop as well as the modules. And because of the new uh, stacking, you can stack I think five of them in your ship, and that makes it a bit easier because you can only you can't stack them in your inventory, so. You know, if you would, if you wanted to carry them, it would be, you know, it'd be pretty impossible um, to try to carry too many of them. But no, it's a good way to make money, I guess. It's probably quicker ways, and I, and I guess you can do farming. And I, and I don't know this, but this is something I'm gonna have to try. So I'm gonna have to actually really try building the base up. But I guess you can do farming without a farmer specialist. Like just from the website, it seems like the farmer specialist is more for if you want to farm. Um, like other stuff, like, um, uh, like any kind of more, like, rare and exotic plants. Um, so I guess just stuff, because, because, uh, uh, that first guy I got, that, that specialist in there, he, you know, the dialogue they gave him, it, it made it sound like you, um, you have to, uh, do a scientist first. And actually, I think in this part of the video, I haven't even recruited that guy yet. Um, I guess what we're going to the station, space station for right now, to be honest, I'm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I, I honestly don't remember. Uh, and I, I edited, edited, I edited this uh, yesterday. Um, and if I do you remember correctly, I cut a lot of it out, especially in the space station part. Probably going to be a lot of points where you'll see um, cuts because of, I mean, I don't know, it just gets boring and I just don't see a reason to, to keep it in, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this is where I recruit the, uh, I don't even remember what kind of specialist he is, to be honest. I think he's like a builder or something.
So it's kind of neat how they have these technologies just lying around, I guess. I guess... Well, I don't know, I guess, I guess someone just stored a technology in there. Um, which I, I guess means we kind of stole it, but that's okay. I would like to know what's behind those locked doors. I, I don't... I don't know. I gotta get an, an atlas pass, and I did... Um, I think, I think in a previous video I was saying like the galactic map wouldn't come up, but apparently it only comes up when you're in space, so that would be part of the reason. So yeah, so there's that's a pretty obvious cut. I think I did some some selling and whatnot. There we go. Yeah, so the guy's gonna be in here. Oh, he's a merchant. The thing is, we never paid him. Like, Oh, we got an achievement, but we never paid him. But he's, uh... He's doing this for free. Because we're giving him, like, food and water or something. Maybe he's, like, starving. And we're gonna feed him. Maybe is that, that little blurb, like, you can use a teleporter? If you have an Atlas class? That was a bit more useful as to how you teleport than the other, um... Then if you try to use the teleport at your base. <laughs> yeah, he really wants a job, but like unfortunately, like even if we gave him a job, it's not like we'd be paying him anyways. Apparently. But they would but they would cost money. Like I thought it'd be like a one time fee or something, like like a contract fee or something like that, but no, apparently they're free. I think it's just neat, all these little ships, like they look really cool. Except for the fact that I'm saving up for a frigate, I would absolutely be trying to buy a new one. I don't know, my ship looks good too, but some of the other ships, and if I could get one with more inventory, that'd be awesome. But mainly I want a frigate, that's what I'm going for right now. And that's going to be quite a bit of money, but I mean, I guess it'd be worth it, like considering you can put a base in there, and you can, um, you, you know, put a whole bunch of storage in there, and you can teleport it up there, and then, especially if you wanted to do, you know, be like a trader and whatnot, that'd be really good, and probably... Probably I'm going to stick around, you know, in this general area until I can get a, a freighter. And then when I can get a freighter, I'll try to collect a lot of resources and find some place to sell them where uh, where I can get a better deal on them. Like, you could almost play this game a lot like Trade Winds, where what you would do in Trade Winds is, you know, if you wanted to make money, you would buy something somewhere. So you would go to a, a market and be like, oh, price is... Uh, price is, is cheaper here, you know, and it was this whole system, it depended on, like, where you bought it, and when you bought it, like, if you bought something where, like, if you, if you, you know, had rice, and it was a port where they don't really have access to rice, then, you know, it's going to be more expensive, and also, like, the different seasons made a, um, uh, made a difference, and there was other factors, some of them were kind of just random, things like, oh, this guy changed his religion, and now, therefore, these items are more valuable here, like, just stuff like that, um, but, you know, you can kind of play it like that, because there is a system, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't want to say random, but I, it's, I don't think it's, it's like it is in trade winds, where there is any kind of, you know, discernible reason for it, but, um, you can go from place to place, and, you know, you can buy stuff cheap, and you can sell high in this, that'd be an interesting way to play, Although it's probably a quote-unquote illegitimate way, I mean, probably the proper way is to get on planets and explore and move from planet to planet. That's probably the proper way. It's 
sometimes when I land it, I just I'm landing so far away from the base. And apparently you can build a landing pad at some point. I don't know if you have to um, discover a technology or if you just gotta start building and then you can do it. But no, apparently you can do a landing pad, so that's kind of neat. Because um, that's something I'd want to do so I can land around the base. So there's our merchant with his uh, iPad. I love this. I love this writing here. Like, I am delighted they joined my team. Their enthusiasm is infectious, and they have a wealth of ideas for the expansion of the base. Like, uh, I don't. I don't know. That's overly positive. That's kind of like where I used to work and had to quit because of this. We had a whole problem where they started wanting to withhold pay. Like, they started wanting to say I wasn't at work when I was and therefore not pay me, so I kind of stopped showing up, and then I quit altogether. Um, but one of the things they told us in training was they said, like, like just the, the language they used in the training material, and this again too, like, I've already felt the benefits, you know, that's, I don't know, but, you no, know, in the training material, it was, you know, it was like the company would do something and the customer was like so so happy about it and it was stuff like the thing the company did it's, it's stuff that some people would be thrilled other people would be hopping mad I would probably be in the category of fairly upset if they did it to me like just a service change that they were doing to some people I would be kind of upset and a lot of people would be really upset about it and just the language and the you know uh, in, in, the, in the training material, like all the customers, they were like, I mean, this was like the second coming for them. This was like Christ came and brought peace to the earth. You know, was his service change. And then they had language like aggressively listen to the customer, which to me is, it, it, I, I don't know, doesn't make sense. Like if you're listening, like those those should be, um, so we're like, like they're different. Like they're different. You can't listen aggressively. You can talk aggressively, you can talk over the customer aggressively, but you can't listen to them aggressively. Um, that doesn't make sense. And it, it was kind of dumb too, like in training they kept you telling us to use positive language, like, you know, never use the word unfortunately, you know, and don't always like, you know, they wanted us in training, they were like, don't always apologize, because then apologizing makes it negative and puts it on negative terms, and it makes it seem like something bad happened. But then when you, like, they had the, like, you know, the stuff, um, like the scripts and the uh, steps to follow that they gave us, and, and, and when you read those, you know, so much of it was like apologize with the customer, emphasize with the customer. They give us talk tracks, and it would always say, "Unfortunately." Now, I mean, mind you, that's because we always got calls for bad stuff happening. Like it's not like anyone called and went, "Hey, you know, we want to, uh, uh, you know, congratulate you, your employee at you know this place it did a really good job." Like we, I got those calls maybe. Like I was there for five months, I got a call like that maybe, uh, at least once, maybe twice. I think only once though. You know, I mean, people call in when bad stuff happens, so, you know, we're gonna have to apologize and say unfortunately and stuff, and, you know, it kind of went against the training, but a lot of what they told us in training turned out to be false in the long run, anyways. You know, the one thing they did tell us, though, was they told us, like, always follow your, uh, you know, your, your process, your script, and your steps and instructions, all that crap. Because, you know, that's going to be more up-to-date than what we tell you here, and fair enough, I get, you know, it does, uh, you know, things do change and do get updated, and whatnot, so, fair enough, but, um, I mean, I just thought it was interesting how different that was and how positive every was, everything was in training and how negative it got when you were actually run the phones and how you know, much they want you to use those kinds of words. Um, but, uh, you no, know, that said, this video is coming to a close. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Please give us a like and have a great rest of your day.